When I start my survey out, first thing I do is try to level the plane, get my cusp on my primary abutment and secondary abutments at about the same occlusal plane level. The next thing that I'm going to do is look at my guiding planes. And again, I would like to have these three teeth lined up to where I have to reduce the least amount of material off the distal edges of these teeth. Okay? And the way I do that is I try to line it up to where this triangular space of light is the same on both of the teeth. Now that isn't, it isn't at all. So I'm going away from my plane that was level. I'm going to tilt it backwards because if I tilt it backwards, this undercut gets smaller. But now I'm starting to pick one up on my canine in that area. I'm looking at that guiding plate area. I can still go some more. I'm going to tilt it backwards a little bit and see whether or not my triangular space of light there is getting to look more like my triangular space of light on that tooth. Now at the same time I have to look at my third one also. So I'm looking at that and, and we're just at about the same amount of undercut on those three teeth. Therefore, we would have to take, we don't have to worry about getting into dentin if we have about the same uh, undercut. We'll take a little bit off of all three of those teeth and uh, where the guide plate area is and equalize that. I said that on this tooth over here, I wanted to use one of those floor clasping mechanisms. And the one that I would really like to use is the eye bar because it provides the least amount of torque on our abutment teeth. So I'm going to look and see whether I've got a little triangular space of light under that tooth. And I would like for the eye bar, it needs to be in the middle of the tooth where it's the height of contour mesial distally. So I'm looking right at the middle of the tooth and I'm looking to see if I have a little bit of an undercut there, which I do. Hopefully it's a new one. So on the other side, I said that I can have a um, rigid clasping system. So my easiest way to clasp this tooth would be to put a mesial rest and go with an arm to the disc. So I'd like to separate my retention a bit on this. We would really like to have direct retainer tips posterior to our fulcrum line and anterior to our fulcrum line. So if we look at here, we don't have much of an undercut on that molar on the distal. We have some undercut quite a bit on our molar on the mesial. And on the lingual, we have, again, we have a, a nice undercut on the mesial lingual surface of this tooth. And on the distal lingual, not much of an undercut at all. Again, these molars tend to lean to the mesial and to the lingual when there's nothing that stops it from drifting forward like that. So we could put an eye bar here. We could put very nicely a ring clasp that would engage this biggest undercut over here. And that's an advantage because if I go from there backwards, one, I don't have an undercut, but if I tried to, I'd have to really cut a lot of that two surface down in order to get the first two-thirds of my clasp arm all above the survey line. But if I go around this way, then that is my worst undercut. That's the worst undercut on the tooth, and it's not going to be much at all here, and I can get all of my first part of the clasp above survey line. So this is an ideal location for my, um, my ring clasp uh, to grab that undercut and not have to uh, do much to the tooth. On the buckle surface, my undercut is all the way down to the gingival margin, practically. 
and that's ideal for an, a reciprocal component because the reciprocal component has to be all above survey line and ideally in the middle third. So if I put my reciprocal arm on this side, I'm going to have to do very little adjustment to the two. And if I go from the distal to the mesial, I will not have to do as much um, reduction of the tooth as if I, tr compared to trying to come from the mesial aspect to the distal. So that works out nicely. Now I'm going to look at my canine and I kind of have two choices there. I have the choice to put um, a cast circumferential clasp or I could put a wrought wire clasp. So it kind of depends on what my undercut is going to look like. It depends on my condition of this tooth, which I'm going to say is a healthy tooth. And we'll want a .01 undercut, which we have up in this area. So I kind of like the tilt that I'm at right now um, in that I can get my undercut here for maybe an 01 or an 02. I'd probably like to put a wrought wire on that tooth because of the torquing action that takes place on that tooth. The clasp arm in front of it gives a little less stress to our canine, but we do have a good strong tooth there. All right, let's go ahead and put some lead in and survey this cast. We put the lead in the sheath. We put it into our vertical rod and tighten it, and being careful not to have that little clamp on the lead itself. And then let's start to survey our, to our various teeth. We're going to survey all of these teeth. Remember to put the lead down to the level of the gingiva so that only the side of the lead is marking and it's finding our height of contour, not us finding the height of contour. Put it down far enough that the side of the lead is marking the height of contour of the tooth. And come on around. Our canine on that side is going to be the lingual, the survey line is going to be right down there at the gingival level. It's going to be up a little bit on our distal guide plate and it's going to come around the front of the tooth and go back up. And we don't necessarily have to survey these teeth, but we're going to survey everything. Got a squeaky wheel here. Our gingival. Our survey line is gingival on all front, all of those teeth. Okay, this is our survey line. And what I have. I'm now going to tripod my cast by taking my O3 undercut gauge, which for me is black, for you will have three notches on it. Put it in here and find three places that are widely spaced that this O3 undercut gauge will touch and it does all three of these places and put a little mark in your cast. Now you're not moving the vertical rod up or down to tripod the cast and come on back here. All right. Now in that area we're going to place a about a three millimeter line and actually one coming down through it right here and right here. Now we circle that in blue. There can be no doubt to the lab technician what we use to find our like survey. Now I'm going to see where I've got some undercuts here and I'm going to take my .01 undercut gauge
Place my .01 undercut gauge in my vertical rod, tighten it, and let's see where we have, we have a .01 undercut, we're going to put the vertical part of the undercut gauge against the tooth and pull it up until that little lip touches and I have a .01 undercut on this tooth right about here. All right. Um, on my molar, I'm looking at all the possible, if I want to do a ring clasp coming in that direction, I have a .01 undercut right here. If I want to use the distal facial, uh, it's close, it's right at the gum line. If I want to use the distolingual, again, it's really, really close, if not right on the gingival margin. My worst undercut, or my biggest undercut, is right here on the mesial lingual, and I'm going to show you how to do a ring clasp, so we're going to use that particular undercut, and we're going to go around the tooth for a um, a, a ring clasp. All right, so let's see. We have to mark our .01 under. We would like to use the eye bar. It's our number one choice because it puts the least amount of torque on our tooth. So there's our .01 undercut on that. And it is, if the undercut is in our mid facial, that's the indication for the eye bar. We happen to have also a distofacial or lingual or distofacial undercut also so we have another .01 undercut over there if we wanted to do a modified T-bar clasp or if we wanted to do a reverse circlet clasp so we have all we have options that we could do three different types of clasp on this particular cast because we have undercuts like this. Now, on this side, I want to see whether I have an O2 undercut to use for my wrought wire if I wanted to put a wrought wire, something that's more flexible on that tooth. And at this angulation, I'm not sure. I might have it. If I have it, it's going to be way up into this inner proc. It would be way up into this area right here. I'm going to make a little mark on my tooth and I would have one right there an O2 undercut also so I'm just gonna label this a little bit so that I know that that's my 0 .02 undercut and that's my 0 .01 I won't label it but it tells me that all right so I have an option of putting a cat a rot wire on this or a cast C and, and the reason I'd even consider a cast C is because it's the canine. It's a long tooth, and it doesn't have any periodontal disease. And um, the cast circumferential doesn't get out of uh, adjustment as fast as the uh, wrought wire does. So those are some options for that particular tooth. If it were a little premolar, shorter, and had some perio disease, then I would be considering a wrought wire, something that's kinder to that tooth than a cast circumferential. But I can put either one of those on that tooth supported side. And then we're going to do a cast circumferential clasp that is going to be a ring clasp and grab back here. So connector wise, we've already talked about it, and I think I'm going to show you how to do a lingual bar as you'll probably be able to see a lingual plate.